Okay, welcome everyone to uh, today's webinar, Discord at the Library, a harmonious implementation. Uh, my name is Charlie Taylor. I'm one of the continuing education consultants at KDLA, and I'll just be moderating this session for you today. And I just have a few housekeeping things to go over before I turn it over to our presenter. Um, let's see my checklist. Okay, the chat pod. Um, I, I've gone over this, but I want to hit it one more time just in case anybody missed it. If you haven't found the chat yet, you'll see a purple arrow in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. If you click that, it will expand a white panel on the right hand side of the screen. And then you'll see a little chat bubble at the bottom of the screen and you just click that and you'll be able to chat in, say hi. Um, you can also use that chat to let me know about any technical issues you might experience or um, ask any questions of our presenter for today. Um, we'll, we'll both, we'll be doing a kind of a combo of taking questions as we go and holding just depending on the topic, but please feel free to use that chat for questions. I'll keep track of them all and make sure we get all of them addressed at the end of the presentation. There is a PDF of today's slides available in Blackboard Learn. So the course that you came into, there's a little section on that page called PDFs and Slides. If you click that, you'll find the downloads for this class. And one of them is the slides for today. The other is a worksheet that Cindy created for you all. Our presenter has created for you all today um, to try and help you think through your process and take notes as well. So super handy. I would recommend getting a hold of that. And just a reminder that this webinar is being recorded and it will it will be available within a week max, <laughs> hopefully before that, um, in our online learning portal. So you'll be able to let your coworkers know about it, um, come back and review anything you want to review. And then finally, we are live captioning this webinar. So you probably saw a notice at the top that said captions are available. You can say yes to see that, to see them within Blackboard Collaborate. You can also use our stream text player and I'm gonna put the link in the chat for that right now. And if you click that, it will open up the captions in a separate window for you in your browser. So it's just a little bit easier sometimes, uh, but just gives you a couple choices. So. All right, I think that's everything I have to let you know about. So I'm going to turn it over to our presenter for today. Um, it is, uh, she's Cindy Butor, <laughs> sorry, Cindy Butor from the Paul Sawyer Public Library, which is here in Frankfurt, and she's a reference librarian there, and she is going to um, talk to us today about Discord. So Cindy, I'm going to mute myself and turn it over to you. Okay, great. All right, I got my video shared. So hello everyone. I'm so glad that you could be here uh, today. Um, like Charlie said, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat as we go. If it's something that you need clarification on in the moment, I'm happy to answer it at the same time. Uh, but if it's something like hyper specific or hyper uh, non specific, those will get answered probably closer to the end of the presentation. Um, but my name is Cindy Butor, and I am a reference librarian at the Paul Sawyer Public Library in Frankfurt, um, where I do just a bunch of a bunch of things. I do a lot of programming work. I do a lot of tech work. Um, and one of the things I was able to do is to bring Discord to our library. So this presentation is a little bit of a combination of what we did, how to do it yourself, um, and any questions I can answer for you. So just a brief overview of what we did with Discord at the library uh, is we haven't had Discord for too terribly long. We've only had it since the end of 2019 in December. Um, and we made it a multi-staff, multi-departmental project. Other libraries might want to keep their discords to be in a specific department. Uh, they may want like a specific tier of staff member to handle it. Uh, for us, we thought since we're a fairly small library, it would work best if we were all kind of trying to work together. So um, 
me and a former colleague, Jonathan, were both in adult services and we kind of got the ball rolling. But we also worked with our circulation department, we worked with youth services, we worked with processing, we worked with IT to just kind of get as many like hands on deck and make sure we knew what we were doing. We also made sure that we created a specific library policy uh, for the regulation of our Discord. That was really important for us to do ahead of time because we did not want to um, we did not want to have a problem that we weren't equipped to handle at the moment. So we tried really hard to think of kind of everything that might come up in the course of our um, use of discord we also made sure that we had like specific roles and channels and abilities uh, and we talked about when we wanted to moderate it we've just kind of decided we're going to do it daily i personally um, check on it several times a day um, it only takes me a few seconds at a time because uh, mostly i'm just like does anyone has anyone pinged me um has anyone like uh, direct messaged me, anything like that. Uh, we've also been able to do both passive and active programming with our Discord. So uh, I've been talking for about five minutes and I'm not sure if anyone actually knows what Discord is. Uh, it's been around since 2015 and I know especially I want to say in like 2017, 2018 in library land, a lot of people were talking about it, sort of like a rising technology. Um, but if you don't know, that's totally fine. Um, so Discord, they build themselves as this place to talk and hang out. Uh, and it's essentially a sort of instant messaging social platform. Um, it's not like other social media platforms like Facebook or Twitter um, in that you have like a big feed and you can like grab a bunch of people, a bunch of friends, family, strangers or whatever, or just kind of shout into the void. Um, you have to actually like join different discord communities to be able to interact with people and the interaction is sort of um, what you might remember if you're old enough from the 90s and the early 2000s um, where there was just a kind of a continuous chat log and you would talk in, in sort of big long threads uh, and Kind of to show you what it looks like, this slide uh, gives you an example of what Discord looks like. Uh, the large sort of window on the right hand side is what it looks like from a browser, and the smaller one on the left is what it looks like through a phone or even a tablet. Uh, and this is basically as sophisticated as the Discord format gets, where you have a bunch of users. Uh, you can see that there's like Lone Wander and Alex and Helio or Helio maybe, um, and those are individual people or bots who are um, talking or giving URLs or things like that. Um, and then it has also been um, sort of moderated. I'm forgetting the word I wanna use, but it's also been made compatible for mobile usage too. Going back really quick, um, so I talked about you have to be able to join different communities in Discord to interact with each other. It's not just, hey, uh, this is me, Cindy, this is my Discord, uh, people can come in and look at it, I can say stuff. Being, Discord, being in Discord really has kind of no purpose if you don't join a community um, and that's kind of why we really liked it for libraries because we could curate our own library community and then bring people into our community and also reach out to our community and just sort of establish this online this additional online presence and to do that we had to make our own server um, that's what the communities in discord are called servers and then you can subdivide your server into various channels where you can uh, 
either do or talk about specific things. Like you might have an art channel, uh, you might have a uh, voice chatting channel, uh, you might have a meme channel, just kind of whatever you feel uh, you need. And so the way that we implemented Discord, and that's this is also kind of where the handout that I made comes into play. So if you want to add any notes on that handout, or if you want to use that handout to figure out how you want to implement Discord, I recommend using it. But this is what we did. Uh, the very first thing we did is we had a big brainstorming session. Um, we wanted to know who we could rely on to help us implement the Discord as well as moderate it. Uh, we wanted to know who we needed to work with technologically, um, and we wanted to figure out what we wanted to do with our Discord, because uh, it was really important to figure out what you hope to get out of Discord before starting it, because otherwise it just sort of becomes a, an additional technology that kind of goes nowhere and does nothing and just adds more work to your staff members, and we didn't want that. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that we thought about how Discord would work in our library and in our policies. You know, was there anything about um, filtering that we had to think about? Was there anything about um, obscene language we had to think about? Um, were there any tools we could use with Discord to moderate the content? All those things. So that was at our brainstorming session. After that, uh, we had to get administrative buy-in. Uh, for us, that's what made the most sense to do next. Uh, so I talked to our adult services manager um, and sort of pitched the whole idea of what Discord was, what we wanted to do with it. Uh, we specifically wanted to connect with our gaming community um, and sort of our, our, our nerdy or more niche communities as well. Um, and so that's what we were trying to convey was the purpose of this. We were hoping to interact with people who were in their 20s and 30s. Uh, we wanted to focus on gaming and pop culture. Uh, and we wanted um, to have multiple staff members moderating and working together on it. Uh, after talking with our administration, we talked with IT because they did have questions and for us at least, we did have to work on some sort of like filtering for us. Um, and then at that point, when we had figured out the technology, we created our own Discord server, which we called the PSPL Gaming Group server. And the great thing about Discord is that you don't have to go live immediately. So our Discord server is invite only, so we could play around with the various channels and sub channels in sort of a sandbox mode, and we could send them to different staff members, different admin, and ask, you know, what do you think about this? Do we need to like come up with additional training for anyone on this? Um, and that was really helpful. U Services also chose to make their own Discord server, the PSPL Teens Discord server, um, and that was partially a difference in what you're interested in and a difference in what would be safe for our community um, because we didn't necessarily want a place where both children and adults would be freely interacting um, and we wouldn't know that they were freely interacting. So if we had a teen server and if we had an adult server, then we could make sure that nothing that we didn't want to happen was happening. And after all that, we made it live. We've advertised it on our social media. We've advertised it among staff. Uh, we've tried to advertise it at various events that connect with it. Um, and it's just sort of been rolling since then. 
So I talked about this briefly just a second ago, but when we were having all of our meetings with admin and IT and staff members, there were some very specific questions that they had, and these also might be questions that you have uh, if you're either implementing a Discord or like kickstarting it in, into like more usage or anything like that. Um, for IT, their big concerns for number one, do we have to set up a server? Because um, they heard the language server and thought that we needed additional infrastructure. And that's not the case. Um, it's just the, the language that Discord prefers to use a server. Uh, it's based on gaming language. And the, next, and the next question they had was, how secure is Discord? Are we going to have to constantly worry about it getting hacked, about our patrons' information um, getting stolen or sold or anything like that? And fortunately, Discord is very secure and they have had limited issues of being hacked or selling data. Um, they don't actually sell or use their users data for anything. Um, there is like an additional paid Discord that you can use, Discord Nitro, and that's kind of where they seem to get a lot of their money. Um, but as a whole, Discord seems to be very secure. And we did also have to change our filters because Discord, uh, before we started using it, the library was one of our blocked sites. Uh, and we just have a few sites at the library that's blocked until we either think that, oh no, we should be using this, or oh, that accidentally got swept up in the filters. And then from the administrative side, uh, one of the big concerns was, do child predators use Discord? Because we don't want to be creating a community in which abuse can thrive. Um, and so I did some research at the time, and there had been some documented cases where potentially that had a, a core accord but discord updated their policies uh, they updated their security issues and no longer became a problem i also was able to determine that even with the free discord service you it stores 10,000 messages so you can continually monitor the messages that are happening you can also prevent um certain amount you can also prevent like pinging for other people and things like that. So if there is any concern about abuse or anything untoward happening, you can actually monitor it, you can kick people, you can do your best to protect your community. Um, in some ways, the protections on Discord, I think are a little bit better than the protections we can afford on Facebook um, because you have a lot more control and as an administrator on Discord. Um, our administration also asked about how moderating and adjudicating would work, but since we had come up with a policy beforehand, um, we were able to answer those questions, and we've used it, our policy, for about three years and not had any major issues um, and not had to really update it either. Uh, we just made sure that the Discord policy was aligned with our internet usage policy and our in-person poli usage policy. Uh, from the staff side, some of the questions we had are just how much time will this take, um, who will do what, and how will we advertise? Um, and as for that first question, how much time will all of this take, um, when we were setting up Discord, it did take us several hours to get that put together, I'd say, I don't know, between four to six hours, between all the policy making and all the meetings and all the sandboxing and everything. Um, and then afterwards, we might do one hour long meeting a month to figure out, are there any new programs we wanna do? Um, are there any new channels we wanna do? Do we need to like um, make new roles, clear things out? And then on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I might spend on average five minutes a day working on Discord. Um, that's what we found as a, a sort of smaller community. We have about 100 people in our Discord. Um, but yeah. So um, 
you may have noticed that I said that we implemented our Discord in December of 2019, which is only a few months before uh, the COVID-19 pandemic started for the US uh, and a few months before lockdown. So um, we really relied on our Discord community during the early months of COVID-19 to connect with more of our users. Um, and we've actually had some pretty significant growth. Uh, July 2020, we only had about 40 members who were exchanging less than 200 messages um, a month. Uh, and then in September, we had a hundred, a little over a hundred members, and they usually exchange between like three and four hundred messages every month. So there's been some pretty significant growth um, in just our like kind of small community that we are pleased with. Um, and that was because during the pandemic, we were continually working with our Discord and trying to think of ways that we could use it to connect with our community, especially when we were so sort of divided and isolated at that time. Um, and we really took the time to learn about our Discord communities. We added more channels based on what people said that they wanted. Uh, people would start a conversation in our general channel that would be about books or movies. And so we would make a book or a movie channel and we would move the conversation there. Um, we had people talk about doing um, LARPing, live action role playing. And so we made a channel for that. Uh, we had people say that they wanted to share things that they were making either as small business owners or just for fun. And so we, modified our permissions to allow people to share pictures or links. Um, and we also created expanded roles so that if you were in a specific role, like a volunteer role, you would be allowed to share pictures and links. But if you were in a more generalized role, uh, you wouldn't. And we based that on who was communicating most consistently at the time. Um, we also made sure that our staff knew how to use Discord. Um, and so we were talking, we had several um, meetings on Discord with staff members, uh, figuring out what do you want to do with Discord? Um, do you know how to use these particular features? And also just sort of like, how are you doing? How, how are things going? Um, and also because we were all on lockdown, we had so many more uh, COVID-19 guidelines we had to follow. We really focused on our passive programming at that time. Sometimes passive, sometimes um, sort of hybrid. Uh, like one of the ones that we did that was a little bit of, of both was our Poke Walk with PSPL. We use the Pokemon Go uh, mobile platform game um, and in Discord, we made a channel for the Poke Walk, and people said that they wanted to join, and they gave, and they uploaded screenshots of their Pokemon Go character and specific stats like how many kilometers they had walked, how many Pokemon they had, and then at the end of the summer, they re-uploaded so that we could all see how uh, how they had improved, if they'd gotten any more Pokemon, if they'd walked any further. And so it was like a fun little way to kind of keep people active. Um, so Discord as a whole is actually really good for passive programming. Uh, so if you have any of those kind of program ideas that you don't really know how to implement um, because maybe you don't have the space to leave like certain materials out or you don't know how you're gonna like effectively communicate with some of your patrons. Discord could be a really good option um, and we've done a bunch of different things. Um, tournaments are usually really popular um, like the little picture here is from sort of a multi-platform passive program we had uh, that was our Yuletide Brawl in which we collected 32 different um, holiday end of the year movies like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Christmas Story, made a big bracket. Uh, we had a bunch of patrons make their own bracket and then we voted on them through uh, Facebook and Discord and we crowned our uh, 
our holiday movie winner. I think it was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer that year. Um, we'll also do quizzes and discussions, um, like our, our Cryptid Keeper is, um, I had a channel in which I would post like little facts about cryptids like Mothman or, or um, Bigfoot and ask people, who do you think this is? And uh, they would guess and we would talk about cryptids for a while. Uh, and then like a really easy thing to implement is um, emojis um, where we would ask like a very generalized question like uh what kind of pokemon do you prefer um and then we have a bunch of emojis and each emoji would be for like a psychic pokemon or an electric pokemon or a ghost pokemon and so people could click and add their own emoticons and we could see that oh everyone really loves the ghost pokemon and then you got the ghost pokemon role and it's just like a cute thing you have um people actually really like those because they enjoy sharing emojis uh, and clicking on things and all of these things, especially like the emojis, don't really take a lot of day-to-day -day work. You set it up once and you let it go and people talk amongst each other. Every once in a while you pop in uh, and see if there's you know, any questions, any things like that, or you wanna keep the conversation going. But a lot of these things just sort of take care of themselves. But it's also possible to do more active programming on Discord. Um, so if you have sort of any staff members or any patrons that really enjoy doing active programming and doing technology-based programming, Discord might be a good platform for, their, for them to use. Um, one of the programs that we did during our lockdown was how to use Fantasy Grounds. Um, and Fantasy Ground is I don't 100% know how I would describe Fantasy Ground, uh, but it's sort of like this software that you can use to create virtual battlefields a little bit. It's used a lot with um, tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and things like that. And we had several people in our Discord community who had brought up Fantasy Grounds over and over again because they were using it to continue to play with their groups while um, adhering to social distancing guidelines. Um, and we had a lot of people who didn't know what Fantasy Grounds was. So we scheduled a specific time and a specific day, and we had one of our community members screen share and talk about Fantasy Grounds and have like an hour long program. And a lot of people really respond to that. They got to chat, they got to experience it. We had a few people even download Fantasy Grounds afterwards. Um, I had been using Fantasy Grounds with some friends and I learned a bunch of things that I didn't know and it was a lot of fun to do. We've also traditionally used uh, done NaNoWriMo on our Discord. Uh, and that's a little bit of a combination of like passive and active programming um, because we would have specific days and times where we would get together and we would do little sprints. And one of the cool things with Discord is that it's not only text-based, but it's also voice-based. So we could all get together in a voice uh, chat and talk to each other, like actually talk to each other and hear each other. Um, but we could also be uh, typing out things. So we'd periodically have sprints and we'd get on and I'd be like, hey, you guys ready to do a sprint? And people were like, yeah, I wanna do this. And I'm like, does anyone have a topic that they wanna do? And someone would say, oh, let's, you know, write a conflict. And so I go, okay, everyone, we're gonna sprint three, two, one, go. And I'd set a timer for 15 minutes and we'd all listen to each other type furiously. And then after 15 minutes, I'd call time and we'd all talk about what we had done. Um, and then that was just a lot of fun. And I enjoyed being able to interact with our patrons in that way. And then we've also used uh, Discord for more in-person events, uh, such as the Creative Gift Exchange. Uh, this was also a program that came from our Discord users, from our patrons, um, because they had talked about, you know, through 2020 and 2021, hey, we want to get together. Hey, we want to get together. Hey, we want to get together. And we couldn't always 
let them at least, you know, in a library program because uh, our guidelines wouldn't allow it. Um, but at the end of uh, 2021, uh, we did get permission to do a small program. And we'd had all these community members who'd wanted to get together and they'd also wanted to do something creative together. So we did a creative gift exchange in which you signed up on Elfster to be a part of the exchange. You made a little list of things that you liked or didn't like and then everyone made each other a gift. Uh, some people drew things, uh, some people did 3D printing, some people cross-stitched, um, and they got together in a short like hour-long event and exchanged and talked to each other and met each other in, pe in person. Uh, and they all really seemed to have a good time with that and it's something that we're repeating this year. Uh, and then another like really big event that came out of our Discord is our tabletop uh, RPG mini swap. Uh, people there in Discord had been talking about the various tabletop games that they were playing um, and how they had all these books and items and miniatures and things like that, and they wanted to swap them. So that became an actual large program that we did uh, this past May, and we had about 90 participants. Uh, we had vendors, we had presentation, we had tables of, of things that people were just swapping. Um, and it was really cool that we could bring the community from Discord into like the in real life uh, interaction. So that's a bunch of different programs that you can do. I hope it has in some way like inspired you to think of your own programs. Um, but if you do run a Discord, I do recommend using some bots to help. Um, so, you know, bots shorthand for little robots. They're, they're little, um, how do you describe a bot? Uh, but they're, they're, they're basically uh, little pieces of data that can be programmed to do specific functions. Uh, so we use the welcome bot, uh, which means anytime a person comes into our Discord and um, for the first time, they're immediately uh, pinged by the bot and welcomed and given some useful information. Um, it usually says something like welcome, uh, here is our policy. Make sure to read it. If you have any questions, uh, you can contact this staff member, this staff member, or this staff member. Um, we also use um, Meeg, M-E-E-6, Meeg, and that's used to track our statistics. Uh, so that tracks how many uh, people we have in the Discord, um, how often they're commenting, who specifically is commenting, uh, and that way at the end of every month uh, we can kind of track our growth or if we don't have growth, you know, are going down and, and talk about what needs to change. Uh, we also use the dice parser, which is used for dice rolls because we're a gaming community and we do have people play games on our Discord sometimes, so it's helpful to have that dice roller. Uh, if you don't use any other bots, I would recommend, um, you know, at least the welcome bot or Meeg. I think those are really, really helpful. So for uh, the library, for PSPL, um, we're always trying to think of more ways to engage with our community um, and to just deepen the connections with our community. Uh, so what we're going to try to implement sort of in the next year or so is working on increasing that engagement um, by adding non-staff moderators. We have some Discord members who are super active. Um, we know them in person and not just online. Uh, they're constantly helping us with programs and so those people get moderator privileges to help staff members. Um, and we also want to encourage people in our community to make Discord uh, more of their own and to develop their own emojis and events and things like that. Um, and even though our COVID-19 guidelines um, have been massively decreased compared to where they were a couple years ago. Um, we do want to work on getting more hybrid programs um, because we've had some people 
really say how much they appreciated the online Discord programs and how moving back to in-person programs isn't working uh, best for them. And so one of the things that we're working on implementing is a Discord role play in which we have a specific channel where you sort of um, act out different scenarios. Uh, we present a medieval town on a specific festival day and invite our Discord members to create characters and say what they're doing and sort of have a little role play chat. We're also looking into making uh, more servers and channels, specifically the PSPL Readers Lounge. Um, traditionally, Discord works best um, for a slightly younger crowd, like 20s and 30s and also teens, of course. Um, and then other platforms like Facebook would work better for uh, 40s, 50s, 60 year, year old people. But we're trying to see if it's possible to create um, reading groups on our Discord. And so that's one of the big things that we're looking into. <laughs> um, not going to talk to you terribly much about these, but if you're interested in learning more about Discord or uh, you need um, more information to take to, you know, your higher ups or whomever, I do recommend you access these resources um, at some time. Uh, the Beginner's Guide to Discord is, is super helpful and it's actually made by Discord. Uh, and the 22 Discord bots that will keep your server hopping is also just a really fun thing to look into, especially if you enjoy bots. Uh, but that is all I have to say about Discord right now. Uh, this is my contact information, so if you don't have uh, anything that you wanted to ask today and you think of something later, feel free to contact me. My contact information is also on the handout. Um, and if you want to join our Discord, that is the link to it. Uh, our Discord is invite only, so you have to use a link to get access to it. But if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to ask them and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you, Cindy. We did get um, one comment and uh, I have a couple questions as well. I'm not familiar with Discord. Uh, I fell into a different age category <laughs> uh, than the one you were mentioning. But um, we had Courtney mention that, that she uses Discord for a teen Dungeons and Dragons campaign to keep everybody on the same page for the story, even when some can't make it to the session. Also a good way to moderate it because she knows all the kids in real life. Yeah. So. Um, our teen Discord also uh, runs a Dungeon and Dragon campaign. And that's kind of like they had, um, they did it all online during the height of the, the pandemic. And then when it moved in person, everyone still talked on the Discord about what they were doing. Um, they would ask questions about how they'd level up. Um, they, you know, tell in jokes about what their characters were doing. Um, and like, it was a really good way for everyone to just sort of like bond and communicate outside of maybe that like strict two hours that you're like, we are here to play and then the library closes. Um, so it was really like helpful there. Awesome. Sounds like it's being used a lot for uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Chuck is mm -hmm. saying the same. <laughs> he started at teen D and D and adult D and D at his library and still runs the adult one kept the club alive during COVID and in home games. They use it for everything from scheduling to memes and more. And it's very popular to use for storytelling and character development in between sessions. So for example, you're all sitting around a campfire after writing the dungeon. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. And uh, it's kind of what we do in the adult uh, discord server. Um, Cause we had, we have, Every month we do a tabletop RPG demo, um, and then we also run a long form campaign. So they just finished up the Dungeons and Dragon long form campaign, I want to say three, four months ago, and it ran for about two years. And we had, we made a specific channel for them. So they would like 
talk about how this specific thing had happened and it like blew their minds and like oh my god or like somebody's character had died and so they talk about you know that character had died and what they wanted to do next and if they were going to build a new character um and i was not part of any of the long form campaigns so i appreciated getting to like glimpse the world and other people would come and be like what is happening and we're doing a call of cthulhu long form campaign right now and um if you've ever played call of cthulhu it's a lot of investigation a lot of role play a lot of eldritch horror so there's always something weird that i find out they've been doing and it's a lot of fun <laughs> he, chuck also comments that um their discord fell apart um, after COVID, the, the Discord for the library fell apart after the COVID years due to lack of use. Um, they couldn't garner an audience that would actually use it. So how did you foster yours? Um, so I think one of the things that helped is that, I, I don't know if this is the case for you, but we already had a gaming community at the library um, that we had been um, trying to build up for several years before December 2019. And so we knew a lot of those people in person. Um, they were frequent users of the library. Some of them were uh, friends of staff members, um, but it was kind of difficult to always communicate with them. And so Discord was another way to communicate with them. And that helped build up the gaming community a little bit more. Um, and then we, I found that in the last year, having some in-person events that connect with the Discord have also been really helpful to keep the Discord going. Um, so we had, like I talked about briefly, we had our tabletop RPG swap meet, um, and that was something where I could go on to the Discord and I could ping people in the appropriate channels or everyone if I wanted to and say, this event is coming up. Does anyone want to be a presenter? Does anyone uh, have any like things they'd like us to add? Does anyone want to be a vendor? And since those were like specific things that the community already said they liked, um, it was helpful to like keep the conversation going. Um, but I'll also be interested in seeing if our Discord does continue to last um, because during sort of our, our height of pandemic, we had a lot of activity on our Discord. Uh, we had our um, Academy Awards like brackets, we had our trivia nights, um, we had just so many things going on. And then I personally noticed the last month or so that that engagement is going down. And so for our library, engagement goes down usually around this time of year anyway. But the previous two years, the engagement had been steady on Discord. Um, so I think honestly, it's going to, we're going to see some changes in our Discord in the next year um, as people sort of get out of the mindset of wanting to be online so much. Um, and really, I just kind of try to look at things, look for things that the community has expressed interest in or that will in some way like benefit the community. Um, so keeping our looking for gaming groups channel open has been really helpful. Um, we have people that want to write, but this year our Nano was not nearly as active as it had been in the previous two years. So we're now working on okay, maybe just doing Nano writing is not the correct thing for us. And so we're working on doing a monthly writing group instead. So I think really to sort of like foster an audience and keep it being used is to just continually sort of reevaluate what is happening, track your metrics, um, and keep trying to talk to people, ping whoever you need to ping, um, and stuff like that. I hope that's helpful. Yes, thank you. And I, I as someone who's not a heavy user, uh, I have had a little bit of experience with it in the, in the past, but are the bots a part of Discord that you can just kind of pick and choose what you want, or is it like a third party kind of an app thing? It's like a third party okay. thing. Um, okay. Like um, me, you have to go to their actual website um, and you have to connect it with your Discord. <laughs> okay. 
And I know we had chatted about you showing a little bit, maybe doing a little screen share of your old Discord. Are you interested in that or? Yeah, I can still do that if everyone okay. wants to stick around for another five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure everybody would be interested in seeing it kind of. Do you remember how to get there? I can describe it to you again. I think share content. Yeah. Window. Okay. All right. Uh, I should be sharing um, a window that has the Discord website on it. Is that what everyone can see? Yes, that's what I'm seeing. All right. So uh, it's really easy to get to Discord. It's just discord.com and you'll come to this screen. Uh, you can download it for Windows. You can use it for Mac. It works across um, all platforms. Um, it's just super user friendly too. And if you go to this page, it's open Discord. And um, let me log out. Okay. So um, to log in or to create an account, this is the screen that you're going to get. Um, you can use a QR code, which is really helpful, or you can just uh, use your email and password. Uh, for me, I use my work email so that I can also get notifications at my work email. Uh, and that has been super helpful to have and not have to like try to navigate my personal email account versus my work email account. You may just have to like talk to your um, IT department or your administrators to just make sure that's okay because we all have uh, different sort of guidelines. And then when you log into Discord, you immediately come to your sort of friend screen uh, and your direct messaging screen. Um, as you can see on the left hand side, I've direct messaged or been direct messaged by several of our community members. Um, and then I basically, I think my only friend that I added is one of my like uh, work colleagues just so we can ping each other easier. Um, but you don't need to have like a ton of friends or anything. It's just helpful to have if you're gonna like direct message them a lot. And then over on the left hand side is where your servers are. So our PSPL gaming group is just here and you click on the server and you just click on the server and that will take you to your library server. Uh, so we have manager's office and this is a private channel that just staff members can access. We don't have anyone else in there, um, but it's helpful so that we can sort of talk behind the scenes about things we wanna do. Um, if someone is being inappropriate in the channel, we can talk about it. Fortunately, we've never had anyone be inappropriate. The closest is that once somebody uh, entered the chat with um, a screen name that was like, a little bit like risque, so we changed the screen name, and that was that was about it. Um, yep. And then we have just a bunch of our sort of channels, like our Dungeon Master Skill, General Conversation, Seasonal. We have a bunch of retired events. These are ones that we've done once, um, or we just usually do seasonal, tabletop role playing. Just a bunch of channels, um, and I'm making them smaller now because they have sub channels and you can sort of get as in the weeds as you want with your, your channels and your sub channels and things like that. Um, this is just kind of what works best for us. But to, to make a server, to make your own server, it is as simple as you click the plus, add a server, and you can use various templates if you want, or you can just create your own. Uh, You'd probably say it's for a club or community. Um, and then you can add an icon. We used our library logo um, and you can choose the server name, just whatever you want. Pest server is fine. And you've created a server and that's, that's honestly it. Um, at the top underneath the name of your server, you'll have your settings. 
uh, server settings are where you want to go to figure out like roles, emojis, uh, members, things like that. <laughs> Let's see, is there anything in particular anyone wants to know about creating the server? Um, it's, it's generally pretty user friendly and because your server doesn't like go live, you can sort of fiddle around with it as much as you want. Um, like, let's see, like you can sort of change it so that it's invite only and things like that. Let's see, I heard a ping, yeah. <laughs> Like, for example, invite people. If you click invite people, so you can uh, invite friends or people that uh, you've direct messaged to your server. You can also create a link to your server. Uh, the standard uh, link expires in seven days, but you can edit that invite link so that it, it never expires or it expires in like an hour or something. You can also limit the amount of usages for it. Um, just, and that can be really helpful if you have a large library or a large community and you're worried about getting spammed or you're worried about um, maybe people like trying to raid your server or anything like that. Uh, right now we have ours as, as never expiring and no limit. Um, and then we just sort of like, update it periodically, um, but you can do whatever works best for you. All right. If there's not any big pressing questions, I think I'll stop screen sharing, if that's all right. Sure, that is fine. Oh, we have a suggestion, maybe showing how roles and permissions are used and set up. Okay, yeah. All right. Probably for that, the best one would be to go to our gaming group. Um, so server settings and then roles. So we have a bunch of different roles. Yes, thank you. So we have a bunch of different roles and some of them are sort of just um, just for fun, uh, like Bard, Barbarian, Druid. And that was really just so you could say what class you play in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, but then we also have like really important ones like our librarian role. And the librarian role is what our staff members use. <laughs> Let me see. Mm -hmm. All right, so what you do is you, if you're, you're editing a role, it's just edit, and then you can look at permissions. And our librarian role essentially is allowed to do just about everything. You can attach files, embed links, you can manage our messages and our threads and things like that. You can mute members, um, all those kind of things that give you more access to control the server. Uh, and we also only have like very finite amount of people um, who have the librarian role. But if we wanted to add more, it's as simple as add member um, and then all the members of your server pop up and it's just you click on one of them and you hit add and they'll be added to the role. Let's hit cancel. And escape. Now to create a role, server settings, roles. So to create a role, um, you just have to click on create role <laughs> and you'll choose the role name, test name. Uh, you can choose a role color uh, and that's just sort of like so that when you see your list of roles, it's attached to a specific color. <laughs> Uh, just make it white and that's fine. <laughs> you can also like choose a specific role icon, um, anything like that. 
and then you can go to permissions and decide what you want that role to do and it's just you click on it green to turn it on um, gray to turn it off so if you want to allow pretty much view channels as standard, but if you want to allow someone to manage channel because that it's your volunteer role, uh, you can do that. But you don't want them to manage roles because you don't want them to have the ability to like change permissions for people, you might keep that off. Um, if you want to allow someone to create an invite because you want all of your server members to be able to invite people in, uh, you can allow them to do that. Um, kick members is probably something that you want to reserve for a role that you find very, very helpful. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically just sort of point and click and see what you want to do. We're still working on getting some of our roles um, updated because we had fun making a bunch of little roles, but for us, we realized they didn't always go anywhere and um, they were just sort of like cluttering up the space that administrators could see. Um, whereas others were really helpful to have, like our creative elf is a, um, is a role that I created specifically for our creative gift exchange and having the creative elf role and giving it to the people who were in part of the exchange allowed me to be able to ping just those 10 or so people instead of everyone or having to like remember who all those 10 people were. So it was helpful to have that role. Mm. Yeah, I don't want to change anything. Okay, exit. All right, so let's see. And that's that's pretty much how permissions and roles are set up. It's very much point and click. Um, so I'll stop sharing. But yeah, if there's not any more questions, like that's it for me. And I really appreciate y'all being here and chatting. Yes, thank you all so much. Thank you very much, Cindy, for guiding us through this intro to discord we really appreciate your time really appreciate you uh, sharing your expertise and your experiences with us and just to wrap it up real quick um, we thank the institute of museum and library services for their sponsorship of this webinar and a lot of our services here at kdla and if you have um, questions uh, related to certification, continuing education, please feel free to reach out to us here at KDLA um, at that kdla.certification inbox. And I'm going to pop a survey link into the chat real quick. If you wouldn't mind to uh, real quick, I think four question survey it takes about two minutes. If you would let us know um, how, how much you love this webinar, uh, have any other suggestions for topics you'd like to see in the future, we'd greatly appreciate that. And a reminder that this was recorded and it'll be available in our portal within less than a week. And um, this, the PDF and handout for today's webinar are both still available in the Blackboard Learn window. Um, and if you are attending live, you'll be receiving a certificate for your attendance today. So I think that's it. I'm not seeing any final questions, just lots of thanks. <laughs> so thank you so much, Cindy, very, very much. Thank you. Everybody get out there and have fun with Discord. And when you're ready to exit, you can just close out of the, the tab in your browser. And have a great afternoon. <laughs>